podcast, not a cast pod. Hey, phrase every day she'll make you say, Oh my god, she got the scoop on pop culture news. So grab a drink, it ain't what you think. It's Sarah. Lenny Dykstra is on the podcast today. I'm a little excited. Because I think you're one of the first celebrities that I've like tweeted at. And then I actually met up for drinks. It was like the most right. random thing. It was cool. No, you were actually cool. You actually, you, you get it. And um, I, I like, if you weren't married, like you to, like, I would have service you. No, seriously. But I don't go there. I told you. I don't. <laughs> You did, no. you know, that was, okay, so let me, let me back up here and tell my, tell my listeners, because, because you're going to be new to a lot of people. Now, I knew who you were. I knew who Lenny Dykstra was from the Howard Stern show. Huge fucking Howard Stern and Robin fan. And I actually always thought you and Robin Quivers had dated, but you guys, you know, <laughs> no. well, okay, well, it would have been a great story if you had. But anyway, so yeah. for, for people that don't know, you are a leg, I mean, legendary, legendary baseball player with the nickname Nails. And correct me, Nails, the nickname Nails came because you're short, but you're like tough as nails, right? I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not, no, there's no, 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 no pussy here. You know? <laughs> uh, no pussy there. So like, this is a sign. So like when I was playing, like, and like, if I was pissed off at a, uh, the opposing player on the other team, yeah, he's too far away, they can't hear. So I'd go, Hey, you motherfucker, and I'd go, like, just tell him, like, hey, meaning you're a pussy, you know what I mean, right? I, I, I know exactly what you mean, yeah. I mean, um, but, but so okay, but you're a huge baseball player, you start your career late 80s into the 90s, and people famously know you because you helped lead the Mets to the 1986 World Series win. Then you go on to play for the Phillies. But the reason that I found out about you, and I, I just loved you in this documentary, is Jimmy Kimmel produced a documentary for 30 for 30 called Once Upon a Time in Queens about your Mets run, right? Yeah, it was really good. It was phenomenal. I'm not really a baseball fan, but I yeah. watched this and I was like, oh my God, Lenny Dykstra seems like, actually all of you guys seem like epic people to hang out with. I mean... I could not believe the drinking, the drugs, all the women behind the scenes. And you guys would get up. You guys would go on these benders and then you'd get up and you play a fucking double header. Like, and yeah, win. That's, 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 uh, look, <clears throat> that's like, it's kind of like the story about Jesus, you know, like, like they say he was born without like getting fucked. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a better story. It sells better, right? Yeah, yeah, if Mary's a virgin, it's a better story. So you're no, saying it wasn't all that. Okay, now the '93 Philly team, that, that I, you know, I was the leader on that team. Now that we, that was, now we fucking partied, man. We 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 kicked ass and like like we had a motto: we we're gonna go to their house, take their money, and fuck their women. Okay, <laughs> meaning no, no, that Philly team, the Met team, it just is legendary because of the. the all the personalities and the fact that we kind of captured New York from the Yankees. And then the season was crazy, you know, exciting. And, 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 and to do New York too, you know, New York is like, I mean, it's fucking it, man. New York's the shit, you know? New York is the shit. Well, you're right. So I want to ask you about the documentary and then we have to talk about your personal life because you, you know, you've hung out with everybody. You have, you have all these, you know, celebrity connections, That's which so we love on this show, but uh -huh. you kind of allude to that when, when you and I, so, so I tweet at you and I say, Oh my God, you know, it'd be so cool to hang out with Lenny Dykstra. You tweet back at me. You and I end up going for drinks in West Hollywood we hang out, we talk about your whole life, and then you said, okay, you're cool, I'll be on your podcast. So yeah. here we are. All right, so the documentary, no, which... but, but I, I was cool, like, because I, you know, I mean, I would have, like, you, you told me you were married, and I, you know, oh, I changed. You were very respectful, by the way. And you know, I get, you you have such a reputation because people you were on. They were talking about you and me on a um, sports radio show here yeah, in DC. That. People were very worried <laughs> about us hanging out. They thought I was leaving my husband for you. I was like, okay, guys, I've met I the know. guy. Right. I met the guy ten minutes ago. We're not fucking. Like everyone yeah. was like losing their minds. I was getting yeah, DMs. Yeah. How does your husband feel about this? I'm like, I told him I was hanging out with Lenny Dykes and he wishes he was here yeah your husband was cool you told him i was cool right like, oh my god yes yeah. yes yeah. so I mean, 
Okay, so yeah. this documentary is, is great, right? Everybody should watch this, even if you're not a baseball fan, because what the documentary does is it takes you back, I think, to the intensity and the pressure that you guys felt in that Mets World Series win, right? But but you kind of say it's edited for television. So what did the documentary leave out? Like what or what did it amp up that really wasn't true? Well, what it left out was strawberries cock. It, it had a it hung like a swamp mule. No, no. It, 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 listen to me. He's the only player in the league that ever, ever I think, had a tape of his cock to his leg. He couldn't run. No, no, no. He, I nicknamed him Soul Pole, you know? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Strawberry's Lenny. my boy. He, you know, it, it, it's, it's so, like, listen to this. And they're, like, you know, it, it's in the end because I think the, what happens is the blood flows down, I think, right? And then right. And it up. It couldn't get to the very end, so the end was kind of wobbly. That's how was, huge Daryl Strawberry's was, penis was. It was, it was a hammer, man. It was a hammer. It was traumatizing. Trying to shower with him. Like two years, I did two years of therapy after that shower with him. I can yeah. imagine. I'm sure you that know, was tough for everybody. It's just a crane, man. I mean, I told him, I said, dude, listen, you know, I'm not gay. I mean, I can like, but it can, like connect it go all the way in because there's body parts up there, you know? And yeah. So I didn't know how it works. And he said, no, he said, it can't. He said, it gets like three quarters, you know. Lenny, d- didn't Daryl Strawberry be, like become really religious? Like, isn't he like yeah, a speaker? A minister. Do you guys still speak? Because yeah, I mean, Strawberry is close, man. He's a great guy. Does he mind? Th- I mean, because you tweet about his cock and then you, you talk about his cock. Like, does he mind that you, I mean, because he's sort of done a 180. Does he ever say no, to you? No, he's a soul pole. You know, he made some t-shirts, soul pole, sold them. He did? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's just made Straw great. And then, you know, Straw, I mean, what a talent. And, and he's turned his life around so awesome, you know, and. So he looks great. So like he, he still play, you know. I mean, well, he does. And I was telling you this when I worked in radio in Florida. I did a charity event with him. I did. People were like, you know, everywhere you all go, people obviously love you guys. When was this? How long was that? Oh my God, ten years ago. I didn't even know. You didn't, I mean, you didn't notice the crane. You didn't notice the crane. No, for I don't even know why I wasn't looking at his dick. I no, should have been. You don't have to look. You can't. Like, you can't it. miss it. No, it just hangs left or the right. I mean, it's. Anyway, let's get off that. Um, <laughs> well, wait. Do any of these guys? Because you, you. By the way, anyone should follow your Twitter, which is Lenny Dykstra, because you, you say everything there. Do any of these yeah. guys call you and go, okay, you know, um, Lenny, maybe don't talk about us back in the day and all our shenanigans and cocaine. I don't, I don't talk about anybody on Twitter. I mean, by the way, on that mess scene. I mean, remember, I, I never knew what cocaine was. I didn't even know anybody was doing it. The only person who was doing it was good in strawberry. So, yeah, because you say basically, like, I've heard you in interviews say you didn't even know that strawberry and Gooden were, like, using cocaine. You had no idea. No, not at all. And like I said, we just very, like I said, I mean, that that team, the the Philly scene, like, I mean, look, man, like, I mean, People didn't have to get a prescription filled. I filled a form, okay? I mean, meaning what I'm saying is, but 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 again, that, that Met, the Met team's kind of legendary because of all the personalities, you know? Totally. And, you and had and everything else. So, and in the documentary, I thought some of the funny, interesting parts, you know, Keith Hernandez, who was like, you know, they, they say was kind of the leader of the team of the Mets. Yeah, he's he, the guy taught me how to play, actually. Yeah, he was, he was great. He's was, um, he was a smart player, and I kind of, like he took me under his wing, you know. So, um, he, in fact, he smoked, you know what I mean? Cigarettes, yep. Like, I never smoked them in my life, but you know, so he'd always call me, you know, back then before before the game starts, the national anthem, he'd go back and smoke a cigarette. He dragged me back there, so I started smoking with him, you know, to, to be cool, you know. But I mean, so that's how it works, so you know what I mean. What did you think? Did you actually watch the documentary? Because it was a four-part yeah. series. Yeah, I did. You did. did. What yeah. did you think of Keith Hernandez and his cat? Because he... Painful. <laughs> fucking painful. Because you just thought it was kind of embarrassing that here's well, Keith... I don't hate fucking cats, man. <laughs> cats are fucking... There's nothing good about a cat. I mean, like, you can't get close to a cat. Like, like I mean, you know, 
this, their, their, their fucking like suck up or something. I, I hate cats. They, they, you can't, like a dog, you can fucking, you know, like get a hold of, you know what I mean? Like, well, like, Keith seemed awfully close to his cat in the documentary. Oh man, those fucking cats. I don't, I don't, I don't, it was, it was, they're, they're airy and there's some about them, you know? I mean, I don't know. I just don't like cats. You know? I don't like. So you found that part painful to watch. What other things, I mean, you look, you were great in the documentary. I thought you were amazing. I thought, you know, it, it just showed you guys under incredible pressure from, you know, the World Series playoffs against the Astros, obviously. Who was the famous pitcher that was cheating but was, like, unhittable that year? Yeah, my, Mike Scott. Okay. Mike Scott. So, yeah, that guy sounded – I love the way they made him seem so scary. Yeah, yeah. so check this out. Um, of all the hits that I got you know, for the Mets, um, the biggest hit was uh, when no one talks about because – so we were in Houston and, and game six, okay? Now, game seven, Mike Scott's pitching. Okay, we couldn't touch him. So if we don't win game six, it's over. Yeah. So so, so a left-handed pitcher is pitching for the Astros. Davey was platooning me. I mean, I, I didn't play. So we're down we're down three nothing. This guy this guy's pitching a one-hitter. We go into the ninth inning, okay? And Davey walks up to me, the manager. Davey so Johnson. Yeah. yeah, it'll be enough. He, he said it'll be enough the ninth, you know. I said you want you finally want to fucking win, huh? <laughs> no, so listen to this. So the Such a good like, line in the documentary. Yeah. So, so I hit a, a triple, like to let off the, the triple. That hit started the rally. See, because if I make it out there, we're done. I mean and, and so that started the like the rally and then we tied it up. It was a crazy game, went like sixteen innings. And but but it was like I mean it was baseball so good. Got, Baseball guys were with us that year. I mean, I mean, it took a miracle to win that game than the World Series. We all know about that. I mean, that that's just like crazy. Crazy. I mean, poor, poor Bill Buckner. At least God did did him. I don't know. God, whatever, did him a favor and he died of dementia. You know. I Is mean, Mike yeah. Scott did? No, no, Bill Buckner. That went the ball went to his leg. Oh yes. Okay. Bill Buckner died of dementia. Yeah, and yeah, you feel like God did him a favor because at least he he could forget that. Right. I mean, don't you? Yeah. I mean, but, because what happened to Bill Buckner after that? I mean, that was... Yeah, I left him, everything. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's how women are, though, man. You know, women... Excuse you know, me? Yeah, I don't like women, actually. Yeah, I know. Well, we're going to get into your dating life, because, you know, I was looking. I don't think you were... I was trying to find out if you were ever linked to a celebrity. You were You were married to your wife, Terry, for 22 years. How did... And by the way, how did Terry stay with you for 22 years? She's a good woman. Yeah, she is. She's a great woman. And so part of getting married, though, is, is um, I mean, for baseball, see, because the, the, the game plan was um, on the road, you go hard. At home, you charge your batteries. So to do that, you have to be married, you know, because, like, like, if I wasn't married, I'd be out, you know? Yes. So, so on the road out, home, recharge. And, but so she was a great um, uh, baseball wife, you know, because uh, like people don't understand there's a lot of uh, guys that have bad wives and they carry it on in the field and affects their game, you know. And bad wives in what way? Like, because because you kind of insinuate that Terry was OK mm -hmm. with like, you know, when you guys were out on the road, you would obviously a lot of you would cheat on your wives or girlfriends. Well, she didn't know that, but she didn't, I mean, I mean, she knew, but she didn't know. I mean, we never brought it home. But the, the wives. um so the wives hated me, see, on the team because I always told the players, "You bring your fucking wife on the road, man." I mean, fuck, what a fucking pussy. You know what I mean? These guys, these guys are afraid of their wives. You know, I mean, look, these players are so stupid, man. Like, they they, they get caught all the time. You know? Yeah. Like, so what I did is to help these players out. Um, I did. I said, "Listen, man." Like this is crazy, guys. You don't they don't know how to do it. So I said, we're gonna do a there's gonna be a real estate fund, okay, real estate investment, okay. So like you're gonna invest, you know, if you depend on how much you want it's basically a pussy slush fund. So so now they can't get caught. So they, so they say they wanna put five hundred thousand in. So okay. It's the fake fund, okay? I mean it's the wife the wife thinks it's a real like investment, investing in real estate. All it is is a fucking place to draw your money from for your pussy on the road. 
see. How did Zine. they get? You know how many marriages I saved? Apparently, I guess a lot. That's what I do. I mean, I try to help people, you know? Yeah. So, Lenny, you grew up in Canada, right? No, no, Garden Grove, California. Oh, you I'm grew from, up in California. No, my my, my uh, family's from Canada. Your family's from Canada. You grew up in California. It's interesting because to me, you fit right in in New York and Philly. And that's, I think, hard to do because, you know, especially Philly, yeah, yeah. P- Philadelphians, yeah. like, they usually I hate. Both. Yeah, I love both cities. See, I'm out here in California in the land of the great pretenders, you know. The, the dudes are all pussies out here, man. You know, the chicks, all the girls got the bolt on, you know, drrr, drrr, you know, fake tits, fake. It's all, but the weather, it's so fucking good, man. Like, the weather you know is I mean? amazing. It's fucking, it's perfect. Okay. Which is a, is a good word, you know, like perfect, like just P E R F E C T, opposed to the word drugs. Like, they are ugly that word is drugs. D R U G S. Isn't that weird? But perfect is a good word. Yeah, like glory is a good word. All positive words. Yeah. yeah I had this one chick, she always used to say glory when she was coming, you know. She, <laughs> she, uh, it was crazy, man. It was really crazy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry your listeners might get Well, mad. no. No, I mean, I want to, they actually want um, relationship advice for you, from you, which we're going to get into, which would be perfect because you've had all, you know, you've been married for 22 years. But wait a minute. Have you ever been linked to, I was doing all my research on you. Have yeah, you ever yeah. dated anyone famous? It didn't seem like yeah, you did. Well, but it was, I kept it in the weeds, you know. I mean, you know what I mean? Well, who is it? You might as well say it no, now. I can't. I can't. I can't do that. I can't. So you I am going to keep it secret, so, um, you know. You know, no, no fatal attraction shit here. You know what I mean? Well, you do have some interesting Twitter engagements. Like I saw um, the HBO star girls, you and Lena Dunham a couple years ago, like went back and forth on Twitter because she was like, I'm super horny for baseball players. And you were like, all right, well, here I am. And then you guys, <laughs> you guys kind of got back and forth. It was good. Yeah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have fucked her. For a second. She's like, <laughs> are you kidding me? That's a, that's a look left twice. You have to look. That's a look lefter. You know what that means? No, that what's means, a look lefter mean? That means when it's bad, okay? Like, you just look fucking left. Because once it's in, it's in, okay? Okay. So you just look left, okay? Look <laughs> fucking left. <okay>? Look <laughs> left. <laughs> well, I thought you guys were, I thought you were an interesting, odd couple, but you kind of went back and forth for, a, you know, like a good solid I'm hour a on Twitter. I'm a bitch, man. I'm a cold bitch. Wow. Now, what about, okay, so I w- also, um, celebrity fights. So, Monica Lewinsky DM me. Who, who DM'd you? Monica Lewinsky. Monica Lewinsky DM'd you? Yeah, I said, no bent crank here. <laughs> you know, because Clinton had a bent crank, you know. You know that, right? Uh, okay, wait, no. I remember did not know. So, they, Bill, they, President they, Bill. They had, test, they had to testify, remember? They testified, remember? Okay. Like, one of them had to, like. Fight. Like seriously, when that big investigation went on, and one of the, one of them had like to like um, him be like uh, define his cock, you know, and she said he had a bent crank, you know. So <laughs> really, I never heard that part. All I remember is yeah. like the jizz stain on the dress. Well, he's a knob man. He's a knob man. You gotta give him credit. The discipline. I mean, stick, stick with a knob. You know what I mean? Yeah. The knob head. You know, stick with the head. Knob means head. You know. Yes. I mean, he never entered. He never went in, you know, with her. You know, he thought he would have just like won twice, but never went in. It's always tricky like this. <laughs> hey, can you imagine on the White House? <laughs> Listen, how about this? The White House. Listen, he's in the White House. He says, "Can you picture it?" Hey, hey Monica, where, where are you? What, what, are you? what are you doing? I mean, you know what I mean? It's so fucking crazy. Man. Wait a minute, though, Lenny. Did Monica Lewinsky really DM you? Yeah. And what did she say to you? When was this? I don't know. Yeah, two years ago. I don't know. And she DM'd you to say what? I don't know. We was something back and forth. I don't know. It wasn't bad. It was good. It was cool. She, she's um, um, she probably gets good fucking head. I mean, smoking head. You know. I mean, huh? She probably. That's what I wondered. Like, did you guys ever go out on a date? You ever meet no, for a no, drink? No, no, you just no. lit, you had an exchange on Twitter. Yeah, on Twitter. Yeah. Somehow we crossed paths. So. We all did. Now, what's the deal? Isn't today or isn't this weekend you were supposed to be celebrity boxing Aaron Carter? No, no, that was bullshit. That was bullshit in the beginning. Okay, well, what was the deal? You guys went back and forth. And would you actually do one of these celebrity fights? 
No, I mean, I was going with Mickey Rourke, that motherfucker. You know, he, owe, he, he owes me 30 grand. You haven't seen the, the, you should Google me and him, man. There's a lot of, like, bad engagements, you know. Why are you and Mickey, why were you and Mickey Rourke fighting? He owes me 30 fucking grand, man. When, you know, he, he remember when he, he had Carrie Otis, that girl, and then the, the, the actress, and, and then he buried all the Jewish people, okay, and then couldn't get a job. Okay, which is the like worst thing you can do. I mean, you know, I mean, they're all my friends. I, my, all my friends are Jewish. Okay, okay. All my friends. You know why? Because they're smart, and I like to hang around smart people so I can learn. I'm I'm actually smart enough to know I'm not smart enough. How's that? <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, did Mickey Rourke insult someone, someone Jewish, or do something anti-Semitic? Was that? Yeah. yeah after he's, when he when he was hot, when he's making his movies. You know, he was on a run there, and he had he popped off, and they blackballed him. Okay, so you plus the fucking facelift set the fucking industry back twenty years. The facelift was bad. I know. Bad. It's, Fuck. It was like fucking. Okay, so so then, but still, how do we get to the point? How does he owe you thirty thousand? All the blow I bought him, fucking he's blown. Like, that's when I had my own plane too, my Gulfstream. Like I tell you, carry that fucking dog around with him. And I told him. That fucking dog shits on my plane. I'm throwing that motherfucker out of 50,000 feet, you know? Yeah. So, so, by the way, okay, you know, you, after you go to the Phillies, right? So that's when all of your kind of trouble started, right? With with drugs and drinking. And then, you know, you were incredibly yeah. rich, right? At your, at your, how much do you think you were worth at your height? You had car I'm dealerships. 50, 50, 60 million. It's all, it's just, it's just paper exchange from one hand to another. I mean, like, I mean, I'm getting ready to get, Get, get real large right now, you know, meaning, and, and I'm not talking about fucking blood flow either, you know, I'm talking about some fucking, some dead presidents, you know, because see, like, I didn't lose that money, okay, remember, in, in 08, the whole world, you're too young, probably. No, like, well, I, yeah, no, I remember the real estate crash in 08. 30, what are you, like 35, 30 Yes, four, yes. Something like that, yeah, you're just a child, man. Baby. Yeah. yeah. So, so, um, but you have an awesome kid though. It's cool. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah. You know, my husband's convinced he's a left-hander and then he, you know, my husband's in soccer, but he wants him to play baseball as a lefty. That's all right. You know, I got like 28 kids. Do you, well, I want to ask you about that. Cause you, do you think you have more, I know you have your three sons with I'm your wife. Breeder. I'm a breeder. I, I, Look, I have no doubt after spending a night with you, well, not a like night, but like having some drinks yeah. with you <laughs> yeah. Yeah. in, in LA, yeah. I, I can believe. How many kids do you think you have? No, I don't know. Um, but like I said, when you're young, you know, like, you know, like you, you shouldn't rock it. But know? don't you think if you had more children, more than three boys, that people, that, that women would come out of the woodwork by now, they would want money yeah, from you. Yeah. Said I was fucking like five attorneys. What are you fucking talking about? Yeah. How many times, by the way, do you think you've either been sued or sued somebody? Because, you know, when you Google your no. name, it's like lawsuit after lawsuit. I, I own a fucking website called suethemotherfucker.com. You own that website? I did. I'm saying, like, the thing is, is like, like, people don't like the fact that I'm, like, I tell it the way it is, you know? Yes. So, I can see that. So, so like, the, Look, they want what I have, okay? They just don't have the fucking balls to risk it, okay? Okay? Because, look, look I, pl I planted the flag on Mount Kilimanjaro, and I slept in the depths of Death Valley, okay? See? So, so my whole life is about getting out of the middle, okay? See? So, like, i never be in the middle. No, ever, ever. So, like I said, I'm either, like, you know, but now my star's on the rise, you know? I wrote a New York Times bestseller, and... So, like I said, you know, it's, I'm a good, 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 good dude to bet on right now. You know, my star's on the rise. You know. Yeah. 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 It's on the rise. You know. See, see, this, but it, like when I was going good and making all this money, I, I felt something bad was going to happen. You know. You did. Yeah, yeah. I have that kind of feeling, but I didn't know it was going to be that bad. Where I was going to go to the fucking cooler. You know. I mean. They yeah, because you end up going to jail, right? For yeah, yeah, man, I fucking for doing nothing. But that's another story. People don't want to hear that. But well, but, I mean, people do because they they kind of are getting to know you. At least my audience is. 
Look, the truth of the matter is I caught some very powerful people. J Google 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 Lenny Dykes or sues JP Morgan for a student for a hundred million. I mean, well, okay. The reason, on paper, anyway, that you you do you did about six and a half months in federal prison, right? No, I did two years, man. It's state prison too. And okay, so how much time did you do total? Two, two years. Two, two, two years in a cage. Two the years. First time, first time the, the the first book I ever read was in the cooler. I heard this story. You'd never read a book before because you actually were worried it would impact your baseball game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did that. And the first time I jerked off was in the cooler, too. So wait a second. You really did? So like in in high school, like you never even had to read a book? No, no. I I, I just worked my way through, you know. Um, um, did what I had to do. So you um, sued? Everything was about baseball. Everything was about baseball. You sued yeah, J.P. Morgan. I was way my way out of the middle, you know. See, I mean, yeah. I had one friend, one friend. I told you, one friend in high school, you know. That somebody to play catch with, you know. I mean, like no girlfriends, no dances, no nothing. I mean, I had, I had a few pipe cleaners, you know. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. So, like, so what happens is I've gotten smarter since I've gotten older. Like, I have a maid now, so she cleans my house and then she cleans my pipes. Okay, wait That's a minute. Fucking... Wait. Uh, no, is that true? There's another story because I mean, by the That's way, genius. You... Genius, though, you know, it's a turnkey service. Okay, but you don't really have a maid that do, that does that because that was another um, yeah, legal yeah. story for you. Were you arrested no over th that? That was bullshit, man. Was okay, wait a minute, wait. A minute. I got to set this up for people. A couple of years ago, yeah. it was alleged yeah. by a woman that you were looking for a housekeeper on Craigslist, yeah. and they it's not even, it's not even worth talking about. It's so stupid. But it's out there yeah. on the internet. So is it true or not but, true? Fuck no, that's true. We're like what? what? Look, the bottom line is, 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 I got some very powerful people pissed off. Okay, I mean, because I was going after them, and I had them, by the way. And so, like I said, it's it's too long of a story to even get into. It's so complicated. That's why in my book, like, what's your I, book? Promote your book, by the way. Well, this is it's House and Nails, um, um, and and Stephen King signed the front of it, and Jack Nelson signed the back of it. But but what I said, see. People don't want to hear um, you saying, "Oh, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. They, they, they fucked me." So the way I did it in the book was, I said, "All I did is this. I said, look, here are the four chapters. Okay, on the legal stuff, you be the judge. Okay, because you know, the book's all the truth. So if you really want all the truth about Lane Dykes, you read the book. That's the real." Okay, so thing. you address everything in there because over the years it seems everything. like. And, and yeah. what's your take? Okay, so I get your point. You you say nobody wants to hear all the excuses or the reasons why, right? Yeah, but, no, 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 because you know why? Misery loves company. See, see, they're miserable. They they want you to be miserable. See, they, they don't want you. To see, oh, there he goes blaming someone again. Blaming someone again. Shut the fuck up, man. You know what, what, I'm, what, what I'm saying is. So I don't even like. It's not even worth talking about. Even in the book, after you read it. So, so after I did my book tour, okay, I did my book tour, I did like 290 interviews, at least. Not one interview, they asked me anything about the legal stuff. Really? Yeah, you know, I, I was doing blow, blow with De Niro and, you know, you know, I mean, you know, helicopter. Which is in the book, right? You talk about yeah, that? In the book. Yeah, I mean, look, all the fact checkers, the lawyer, you know, Harper Collins is like the biggest publisher in the world. They had, the fact checkers were calling me you know, the lawyers, like, fucking over and over and over because, you know, they had to prove because, you know, they get sued. But, I mean, there was, like, eight women that testified that, <laughs> that he was there. So, Lenny, you kind of live your life. The, you've always lived your life the way you fucking want, right? Like you, you, like you said, you do not want to be in the middle. You do not want to be the soccer dad. Like, you've always gone the highest highs, the lowest lows. Do you think you could have the career that you had in the 80s and 90s now? Like, in this in this era no, where... No? No way. See, see, see the, the drugs were important for me, the steroids, because I was little. And so, like... The season people, they don't understand baseball. It, it's the most grueling schedule in sports. It's 107 months of baseball. And so so I, I didn't forget how to play baseball. I just, my body couldn't hold up, you know? Yeah. So, so you know, I went to a doctor and 
and told him, like, you know, I needed something, so he gave it to me, and so I was able to hold up for a whole season, you know. So I actually did it for the right reasons, you know. You did steroids to to kind of, like, keep yourself healthy enough to continue. Yeah, and so I could take care of feed my family, you know. Yeah. So, every, so like, you know what I mean? But I was way ahead of the curve. Like, when I did, they were still legal. They weren't even legal. Yeah. In 1990, man. So wait, when you so it was still legal to do steroids. In- well, it wasn't illegal, you know. Oh, it wasn't illegal. Even, okay, got I it. I knew about it. I was ahead of the curve. I mean, wow. look, I'm always ahead of the curve. Look, here's what else I did. I took six amoxicillin every day. Okay, six amoxicillin. Okay. I have a sniper on the end of your cock. Okay. <laughs> I mean, meaning, huh? Talk about fucking. Talk about being ahead of the curve. You know, like building. You no, know, no. Me- Castles, they build them moats around them. Castles, yeah. So they saw, I take six of my zone, you know, that's the strongest kind of zone. Okay, that's like having a fire like said, having built, I had to take a sniper right into my cock. Nothing couldn't, you know what I mean? So well, I went through some volume, you know. Yeah, and yeah. why were you taking the amoxicillin? In case you know, I got some, in case you know, just. Like I said, I didn't get, I said I went through some volume, you know? Yeah, so, okay, so, like, you I'm were taking the moxicillin to make sure you didn't get an STD. Yeah, of course, man. I had a sniper in my Does coat. that work, I'm though? Not, I'm not a coat man. I'm not putting a coat on, okay? You're not wearing a I'm, condom out there, Lenny Dykstra? I'm not, putting, I'm not putting a coat on. Well, I don't enter too much, you know? PC, PC doesn't enter, okay? And yeah. that story I've heard on the Howard Stern Show and on Artie Lang's podcast, like, you, because... You call yourself PC, right? Perfect no, cut. I mean, no, 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 no. My, 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 the doctor told my mom when you were circumcised as a child, yeah. it was yeah, the perfect cut. Gave, gave some, it's not a monster. Don't get confused. You know, but but like chicks, like sometimes they go, "What the fuck?" You know, and you know, so. You know, <laughs> Oh my God, Lenny Dykstra, the life of Lenny Dykstra. Um, so, okay, you you live this like wild life, you know, the life that you want. I hear you have zero regrets. You you everything that you've done, you do it again. Is that right? Absolutely, man. Listen, listen. At the end of the day, people forget. Like, like, like. Of course, of course, there's some things I'm not proud of. Of course, I, you know, I have my flaws as a human. Okay. But but, um, at the end of the day, I'm genuine and, 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 and like I'm loyal. And see, loyalty to me is the biggest thing. Loyalty's left the building nowadays. Like, there's no there's no fucking loyalty out there no more. People, I cut and run. As soon as something bad happens, they cut and run on it. You know what I mean? So so like I'm just I'm, I'm kind of old school. This, you know, this is the same thing. I'm a missionary man. The whole deal. You know? Yeah. You're. Um. Okay. And and. How do you feel about baseball now? I think you were telling me you don't really follow baseball now, no, right? I don't really watch it now. Why is it's that? Boring. Well, I mean, they don't play right. Number one, it's boring too. You know, it's like, I mean, I, I like playing was different. I played you know, to win for the money and and um, other things, but watching it, it's like fucking taking the Xanax, man. It's just yeah. so you think it's just so uneventful now, like because you know they don't really have the fights that they used to. There's, they're yeah, just... see, that's the problem. See, like now, like like we see the fight. Like now they have suspended for fucking like three weeks. It's a joke, you know. Rob Manfred, the then the the, the commissioners fucked the game all up. You know, I mean, like they put a guy in second base in a tie game now, like a beer league. You know, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. But anyways. Um, let's talk about what else. What else? Okay. Well, about? people want to ask you um, about relationship advice, but I, I have one more um, question for you about baseball, which is, um, you know, cause obviously you, you were doing steroids before there were steroids, all that stuff. What do you think about? The method, never done. What's that? Method. That's the, the, the none. Oh, wait. The method, not, not that I went to Philly. Who? Okay, but I want to know this. Who do you think was like the last exciting baseball player to watch? And then we'll stop. How, I, like, I want to talk to you about everything else, but that. But you know, um, there's still like a Rod is fun to you know, well was or whatever, and you know has a lot going on. Obviously, you know, in the celebrity world, who do you think was the last interesting baseball player that you like to watch? Um, Barry Bonds. Really. Yeah, and Barry maybe. Bonds will like never be in the Hall of Fame, right? Because he used steroids. Yeah, he should be. That's the problem. 
The Hall of Fame is all fucked up. The three best players in the history of the game are in the Hall of Fame. Pete so Rose. Like, yeah, and then Roger Clemens is fucking awesome. Yeah. So like, I I got I, I got escorted out of the Hall of Fame. I went in there, you know, um, I was doing an autograph show there because I wanted to know. I said, listen, I want to know what the threshold is that makes somebody a bad enough person because like they were all taking amphetamines, okay, and then like so what's the threshold like? You know, and they wouldn't answer. They don't know. I said, "What? What is it? What? What? Like, is it the Hall of Fame for fucking like good guys? Like, they have a Hall of Fame for good guys. Yeah. This is for baseball. Ty Cobb was a fucking Ku Klux Klan member, man, back then. Wow. What say is is you can't get a little bit pregnant, okay? Yeah. You take, you take. They're, they're all taking amphetamines, okay, back then. Everyone was. So, like, what I'm saying is, like, it's a joke. It's a fucking joke. I mean, okay, like. Uh, again, it's, it's something that's it's, it's, there's no rhyme or reason. And to it. wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you in the Hall of? Are you ever no. going to be in the Hall of Fame? No, no, no. They won't put you in the Hall of Fame. No, no. Because no, you speak too much truth. They're not going to. No, but, but no. What I did though, remember, is every time I had a contract year, okay, I'd have a great year. You know, so I'd, I'd be disciplined and hit three hundred. Then I sign a three year contract and basically chase you know get hurt for the next few years, chase pussy, you know, and then, uh, yeah, I fly around my, my plane in Europe, man. You know? so, the, yeah. That private yeah. jet sounded awesome. And I'm sure have seen so many stories who were some, okay. What was like the best night you had on that private plane? Uh, well, check this out. So, so I was with, so when I travel on my plane, I had to take two dudes that have to go with me because, they couldn't keep up. One would have to rest. They take shifts, you know. Okay. You know, I have two, 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 two monkeys with me. You know, two, two. I mean, they take shifts. So I was on this mission to fuck Princess Stephanie. Okay, in Monaco. Okay. Oh my God, not I gotta because, Google. No, not not because she's that hot. No, no, I never, I never, I never got, I never went there. Okay. I mean, but I tried. But this is where the story leads. So this is when I'm like fucking twenty nine, fucking Greek statues, fucking. Uh, fucking millions of dollars. So, so she had this restaurant in Monaco that she owned. So I go in there with my my buddy, and I say, "Go get the four one one. Go see what's up." You know, he says he's coming back. He's not here. I says, "Fuck." I look back at the bar. I see these two fucking like Swedish girls right out of a tourism book. You know, I said, "Bro, go get the four one one on that." Okay. Yeah. So he comes back. He says. Bad news, bad news. They're with their fiancés. I said, look me in the fucking eyes, Cross. Look me in the fucking eyes. I said, this could look me in the eyes. I'll have their fucking suitcase on the sidewalk tonight. Tonight. You hear me? Okay. Long story short, I went and chartered a big fucking yacht, you know, and to go to Portofino. And so, of course, I pulled them, okay? And their suitcases were on the sidewalk. So... I'm on this fucking yacht the size of a mile. And and so me and my buddy cross he wasn't my buddy, he's like my, my, we're on the what do you call the front of it? I'm not much in the boat, so you're on like the bow. Yes, it the bow, right? Yeah. Drink, drinking a corona, you know, and in this boat. And I look back over and I see the two Swedes sunbathing nude. And I said to my boy, I said, Bro, take a look at that and fucking <laughs> bottle it. And bottle it, I said. Because this is, this is as close to heaven as we're ever going to get right here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Lenny Dykstra. Okay, well, that leads me to this. Because people want relationship advice from you. Because you obviously... And, you know, you're notorious for going on Stern. You say you're great at eating pussy. And you told me, personally, it's for a couple reasons. One, you almost had your tongue severed off, right, as a child. So yeah. you, you have this, like, ridge on your tongue that makes yeah. you... I've even seen on the Stern show women talk about like they you actually like went down on them and they said it was like amazing. Yeah, no, it's a gift. No, it's a gift. I mean, like it's it's. I mean, but there's a lot. I'm so dedicated. Like I'm so dedicated to it. Like, and you have no teeth, which you well, also. No, that's what I do, but when you know, they don't know that. See, I just talk about that. Me. Oh wait, Lenny, this is what I want to know because I think there's an epidemic. Women, women now under the age of 40, there's an epidemic. A lot of guys will not go down on women. They won't. Why do you think that is? 
Well, I mean, look, if there's any odor whatsoever, like I say on the way in, they have to shower first, okay? Because like, I'm like the Picasso, an artist. I can't do my artwork if the canvas isn't clean, you know? <laughs> so, okay, there's, so there's been times that I've been like halfway down and I said, get the fuck out. See the door? <laughs> the door, turn the handle to the fucking right, follow the signs that say exit, hit the elevator, hit down, get the fuck out of here. The canvas yeah. wasn't good. No, no, and it's it's it's, a, it's over. But but again. Um, okay, but wait, wait, but so you're saying that? Okay, all right, fine. Women, all right. You know, you got to have the canvas clean. But I yeah. think there's a lot of guys that don't want to go down on women. Yeah, there is probably. I don't know. But I'm a, but I'm a pleaser. See, you know, like like you know what I mean? Like I take them like like it's a different place they go to. You know, and there's a lot of oh my gods. You know, a lot of fucking. Like, so, because it's a very slow process, you know. I mean, it's just like feathering, feathering, feathering. Okay? I mean, there are women that actually give classes online on how to give a great blowjob. Have you ever thought about like launching Lenny Dykstra's How to Eat Pussy? And like, yeah, you um, could teach uh, guys. Yeah, I mean, someone wanted to do, do a, a show with me called The Art of Eating Pussy, you know. You didn't do yeah. that show? No, no. Because, um, Look, I don't give out my, 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 my secrets, you know, because it's all about the pressure, okay, the pressure, the precision, and the accuracy, okay, and and, and, and the timing. It's like everything else in life. It's the timing, okay? You have to know when, when to apply, but, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, a lot of things involved, okay, for, for a chick to go on the, the space shuttle, okay? And it's a space shuttle. They literally go to Andromeda. I see okay? you tweet about the space shuttle often. Yeah, yeah. So, so what I'm saying is, is, is I'll take the Pepsi challenge of any one of these bitches, you know? Um, any, any one of these bitches, these lesbians, whatever, I'll take the Pepsi challenge of them. <laughs> I'm sure they'll love that. Okay, wait, wait. So listeners to the Sarah Fraser Show want some love advice from you, okay? So, um... The first question for Lenny is, do you think that opposite personalities attract or do you think it's better to have similar interests? So you've been married, you've dated everybody, famous people yeah, that you won't better, reveal. It's better, have, it's better to have similar interests. You think? Why? Yeah, because, because you're not fighting, see? And then fighting, I won't fight, by the way. Like, I won't argue. You're a lover. I just won't do it. It's, it's a waste of energy. Like, what for? So what happens is you have opposites, there's going to be tension and there's going to be some, uh, it's going to get, and people will say things they shouldn't want to say. So, it, it, I mean, that's a stupid, whoever says opposites, that's fucking, that, that's, that's crazy. Okay, you don't believe in opposites yeah, attracting. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe a fuck or something, but you can't. Remember, if you get married, man, like, like I tell people, like, before you get married, think about it, man. You got to be able to, you got to say to yourself that you can get up with that person the rest of your life, okay? Yeah. You, know, you can't, like, and that's a big decision. People get married, like, these entertainers I see, these actors, why do they all get married so fucking fast? They get divorced. Tom Cruise gets divorced and married, like, right? At the same time. Some arranged shit or something, you know? <laughs> you know? Okay, yeah. wait. Um, so other people have questions. Um why here's one because you obviously know a lot of men why do you think it's so hard to marry and find a guy who wants to have kids i'm 34 this is from a female listener well it's 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 because it's a responsibility you know and like like to be a father man like you know like for instance one of the things that i, I kind of um I was always at my kids' games, okay, okay, but I wasn't present all the time. Yeah. Oh, I'm you sure. I mean, but but so, but a guy, you know, look, when you get that old like that, I don't know. It just depends on the dude. You know, it, it all depends on the guy. You know? But you, but I think in general, don't you think men and women are just waiting longer in relationships? They've seen their parents get divorced. Sure. I think people are more. I think people are are, are more afraid, right? To and, like. Absolutely, most people they don't get married. They're, look. The, the, the bottom line is, is, is money. It's always about money. You think you think a lot of men don't want to commit because they're worried about the finances. They're worried well, about. No, yeah, no, I'm just saying the money. Everything comes down to money. Okay. I mean, like, I hate to say it. Okay. Okay. I mean, like, you know, 
anybody that says money is the root of all evil doesn't fucking have any, okay? That's a good what point. What I'm trying to say is, but it ain't the, it ain't the end all, though. It doesn't, doesn't, money doesn't, like, so for instance, I have a good friend who's a badass psychiatrist in fucking up, up over east side New York. Yeah. And he does couples. He does couples, you know? And and so, like, I, I said, what, 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 like, how does it work? He says, three things have to happen for a relationship to work. I said, what do you mean work? He says, for it to be successful. Okay. What are they? And he said, 60% is physical. Okay. And then we got, you know, like 40% of the, for the save old money and the other 20. So, and he said, the problem is I can't tell a dude like, Hey, you should really like her tits, man. Your wife's tits are nice. You know, you should really like them. I mean, it's either there or it's not there. You can't teach somebody like, like to be into somebody else. Yeah, you can't do it. Like, but I mean, what's the some, okay? I've been with some hot chicks. I've been with some hot chicks. I fucking I couldn't take. I like fuck. I mean, just get the fucking towel and go. You know. Well, it has to be so many things, right? It's your personality. It's your chemistry. It's the way you both look physically. It's it, you yeah. know what you yeah, have in like, common. Yeah, like like any like both like boltons. I, mean, I got a big problem with the boltons out here. You know. Yeah, which I mean, basically okay. the boltons are uh, fake boobs, right? Yeah, it's okay if you get some, you know, shave them up, whatever, you know. But I'm talking about the ones like fucking them, these blonde, the big. I'm talking about the. This They're very of, skinny with huge boots. It's a very. It's so control. weird. It's the guys control. like them, you know. It's like, like the, the other thing is too, is this whole deal about you know these girls wanting to look like fucking five year olds. I don't, I don't really get that. You know what? Yeah, a lot of people talk about that too. Yeah. Why? Why I mean, the obsession? Really, but like, here's the deal on that. Here's my thought. This is my thought process. Like, if I'm a girl, like if you're a girl, like and if you got a perfect spot, like right down the line. Like I'm talking about fucking <laughs> no. Then you can shave. Look, you can shave it. You know, look, you uh, could, right? No, but yeah. if you got a, if you got a z z z, grow the fucking hair. What great advice for grooming? I think I've only seen about like, like you no. Know, there's been about four chicks I've been with that had about 88, 88 degree spots. You know? You know, 90 degrees is right down the fucking line, okay? That's probably you pretty know? hard to do. Yeah, I don't think most yeah. women have that. But we've had some close ones, you know, like I said to them, you know, that's a fucking almost, that's a almost a perfect fucking spot, you know? You know? See, like... No, wait a thing, sec. Like, I don't know about that's the other thing, like, like gay people, like guys are gay. Like, sometimes when when the girls asleep, you know, because I don't sleep that much, I'll, I'll like... <laughs> back and i'll look and i'll look at like i look at this beautiful fucking gift you know and like precious like girl what a beautiful and i mean how does another dude wake up next to the other dude's hairy ass <laughs> okay huh? wait we have more you advice better, you better fucking kill me man <laughs> we have to, I, I hear so you say that like in fucking, every interview i know i'm saying though you better fucking kill me. hey okay me, you're I not tell, gay we understand that we I understand tell, you're not gay I but tell, i also tell the girls this don't tell me to pull your fucking hair. Don't tell me to choke you. <laughs> you put your finger near my ass, I'll break it off. Okay. okay? Yeah. But people, okay. you know, people are born that way. They're into what they're into. You're, you you okay, happen whatever. to be straight. I'm just like, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. There's all kinds of things. Okay, wait. Fucking, I've got... Like Kung Fu. Remember Kung Fu? Kane, the guy? Gave yeah. Charity? This yes, guy, I loved it. I used yeah. to love him. So did I, man. He's lots of grass. But this guy wanted to come so fucking... Bad. He he wanted to, have to get choked. See, he died. You know, he died of a Infis a, asphyxiation. A, yes, right, he tied himself work. up in, in Thailand. Okay. Listen. Yeah. Yeah. So if you imagine, of course, the three Thailand chicks. Like he's saying more and more and more. Like that's wanting to come really fucking bad. You know what I mean? I mean Lenny, I, mean, I have like okay. I know we have a limited time, so I want to I, I want to ask you these other relationship questions because you are you are life. Is like really unmatched. Is. People want to know this, Lenny Dykstra. How I'm truly and deeply in love with someone who may not know who I am. They don't even know that I'm in love with them. What would you suggest? Have you ever been in love with someone, Lenny, that didn't know even what, know? I, mean, I don't know what love is, really. You know, I mean, you were with I, your wife for 22 years. Yeah, no, but, but see, I treat women with respect, though. You know, I mean, I'm respectful to them, unless unless there's some odors or something. You know, bad odors. 
But but what I'd say to that girl that asked that that advice, yeah, I'd say go, go after it. You got to go. Tell after them. It. Tell them you're no, into. You just no, say you have to go after. You only live. Look, what, what's what's the worst thing to happen? People people forget. Like life is short, man. Like 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 time. You can buy a lot of shit with money, but you can't buy time. So you know. Look, eighty percent of the couples out there, I'm not down. I'm not. I'm not talking down, but I'm giving facts. The husband gets up, gets in his fucking car, fights traffic, goes to his shitty job. Okay, fuck, gets back in his car, home to his miserable fucking wife, eats her shitty fucking food. They don't fuck. He gets up in the morning, does it again. Days turn into fucking nights. Nights turn into weeks. Weeks turn into months. Then he fucking rolls a seven. They put him in a box. People walk out there and say he's a good guy, and that's it. That's it. No factor. Brought nothing to the party. Oh, my God. You're kind of right. I mean, that is true. Actually, I feel like that's the realest thing you've said, honestly. Well, I mean, it's, it's just the way it's life, you know? You know that's why? really good. They're, 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 they're the one outside the comfort zone. But again, but, see, but remember, though, see, so it's, I'm all about being a factor, okay? Like, you know what I mean? Like to bring something to the party, you know. Like I really do believe I help people, you know, one way or another. Because people help them, like because they're, they're, they hate me or they love me. You know what I mean? Yes, you're a one yeah. or the other type type person. Yeah, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a man of the people, you know. I'm a man of the people. Um, okay, well, we, we've covered so many things now. I, yeah, I have I'm like not sure that's fucking old fossil Joe fucking Biden though. What a fucking joke. <laughs> Huh? You I don't mean, think Joe fucking... is doing a good job running our country? That guy didn't fucking, they didn't, they didn't get them fucking votes, man. This this country's fucking corrupt. Look, I don't give a fuck, okay? I don't care. I'm not into politics or any of that shit. I you seem to be, though, you seem to be on your Twitter. Now, what's the deal? Did, did you get vaccinated yeah, you, or not? You, yeah, I got vaccinated. You tweet a lot about, you know, it seems yeah, like anti-vax it's, stuff. It's a person's choice, you know? In fact, I told the bitch, hey, you know what? Just hit me in both fucking arms. I don't have to come back. You know? (laughs) (laughs) Wait, Lenny Dykstra. Hold on. I got to ask you rapid fire. By the way, you're also, you have a very famous daughter-in-law, Jamie Lynn Sigler, right? And and your son. And you, how many grandkids do you have? Meadow Soprano. Meadow Soprano. Meadow Soprano is your. I have two kids. So are those your only grandchildren that you know of? Well, yeah, I only have two kids. uh, And. I thought you had a third son. You only have two boys? No, a stepson. He's a stepson. That was my wife's son. Okay, got it, got it. So you have two grandsons. They're super cute. And a famous daughter-in-law. And your son played. They they didn't move to Texas. Uh, They moved to Austin. Everybody lives in Austin. Do you think you'll move there? No, no. Look, I I move in all the time, man. I mean, I'm a fun. I'm on a move tonight. I'm on a red-eye tonight. And I mean, and your son Cutter Dykstra, right? Played briefly. In yeah. has to be hard to be a fam- to have a dad like you. Like it has to be hard to have your father well, be a famous major league baseball player. Well, see the thing is, here's the deal. Okay, like the look, the people need to understand that playing the big leagues, there's only thirty jobs available, and and it's not not when I say thirty jobs. So there's thirty teams. So if you're a center fielder. There's only 30 jobs, and it's not from the people in California, not from the people in New York, not from the United States, not from Japan, not from China, from the world, okay? From the world, now, yeah. The problem, is, the problem is you got these fucking anteater dicks. Oh, the 40% of the league is anteater dicks now, okay? You know what I mean by that? Yes, you they, told me this, uncircumcised. You know, well, the, the dudes from Dominican and stuff, you know, the Puerto Rican, Dominican Republic and stuff. <laughs> No, because I took a shower one one first time. I was just out of high school. I took a shower and I never seen an Annie. I said, "Dude, what happened to your dick, bro?" You know, but he didn't speak English. You no, know, it's like an anteater. You know, it looks like an anteater. It's nasty. You know? Oh my God. Okay. Well, um, so off. What I mean is, so what is it? so didn't put the, the work in. See, remember, I grew up with a family that, that you know, six kids, and you know, my parents worked their ass off and barely made it. So, but, but to, we all want our kids to grow up privileged, you know, like yes. we, we lived on a country club. And so, you know, you, you got to put the work in, man. Like, okay, unless you're an elite player. So, so 10% of the players in the league are elite. Okay. Like, like a Daryl Strawberry, 
they're going to be a star no matter what, okay? Yeah. But the other 90% are right right there, they're kind of close together, okay? So it's, it's who puts the, the, the work in and does the little things to get you over the hump, okay? Okay? And and, and, and that's why, like, you know, that's the difference, okay? Because, like, and, and it's interesting if your listeners don't know, like, I played with people in the minor leagues that were just as good or better than some of the people in the uh, big league. Yeah. So, so it's again it's so many things right it's luck it's being able to perform at the right time it's so many things yeah well it's just being able to call having some fucking cock you know and you and be, having cock yeah that really yeah yeah you fucking gotta you gotta want to be up there when the fucking game's on the line you know not not afraid like these most of these see look the bottom line is 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 at the end of the day okay pain is temporary okay but see if you quit See, that lasts forever, okay? Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Lenny, see, you have some really great, um, you have some good life tidbits in here. I mean. Yeah, no, I do. No, I, I do. It's true. It's true. To see, people, people, like. If but people then you kind of go off the rails. I can see why it's. Yeah, yeah. But see, if people don't have something to look forward to. Yeah. See, they get depressed and they lose. And then, and then, and then, and then once they lose hope, okay, they're fucked. See, see, so. What I'm trying to say is, like, and you know what I'm talking about. They, the people know what I'm talking about too. You know this depression shit they hear about. Like, like somebody told me it's like a disease or something. Okay, depressed. I said, what the fuck? Get the fuck up, man. Let's go. You know, but they can't do it. You know, it's a problem. Like, it's yeah. a real disorder or something. You know, I fight through that shit. You know. And yeah, yeah, you don't medicate as well. I mean, no. I mean, I mean. I, I do a lot of shit, but I fight through that shit, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you can but always get down in different parts of your life. But you... No, but you got to fight through that shit, you know? You got to fight... You gotta, you gotta, I'm a fucking man. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fucking man. All right, I have one last question for you, and then and then you'll have to be right. on the show again. You know that, so, I'm a fucking man, you hear me? I... I'm a fucking, I'm a fucking man. I ain't no fucking... I ain't no pussy here, okay? I, I hear you. I mean... Yes, if we know anything about Lenny Dykstra, you are the fucking man. And you, no, no, I'm not, not, not the man. I'm a fucking man, man. You are you know a fucking I mean? man. You know, I'm not afraid of the dark. I don't believe in ghosts. Now, wait no. a minute. I do want to know. You tweet about this publicly, so you you can tell me what you want to say, what you don't want to say. But you are in a few, you've been in many feuds over the years, but you are in a feud with the former baseball player, uh, Ron Darling, who was also on the Mets. He was a pitcher, right? Yeah, Mr. P, I nicknamed him Mr. P, Mr. Perfect. He went to Yale, pretty boy. And he let he alleged that you are racist. You know. Oh no, he got yeah, he got buried by that. He got fucking humiliated. There's some stuff going on there I can't talk about, but just know one thing: Ron Darling is a fucking coward. Okay, I don't know how his wife fucks him at night. Okay. (laughs) Okay. I want I you, you publicly put it out. You publicly allege, right? I'm not saying anything that isn't out there. That you have alleged that Ron Darling faked cancer. Look, I never say anything. Look, look, I'll never say anything with absolute certainty unless I know with one million percent certainty. Okay, it's a fact. Like when I was playing baseball, I could never tell the on deck hitter, even though I own the pitcher. Okay, I could never tell my guarantee I'm going to hit this time. You know why? I might hit it at somebody. Okay. Gotcha. I couldn't see. So, so, so if I if I say something with absolute certainty, okay, it's a fucking fact. Okay, okay, because you know why I put my time and I do the work and I cover every fucking base, every fucking dot, every I, fucking cross every T, and then I come to a conclusion and 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 there's no way out. Okay, so that's how I roll. When when I go up against somebody, I box them in. You see, and there's no way out. You know, like like when. When I do my book, Harper Collins, you know, you know, all women are in that business. So my editor wouldn't even see me. So, you know, I had to get a visitor sign, you know, visitor sticker. Yeah. So I put the visitor sticker on my dick, you know. <laughs> and so I walk. I, I, so listen, so I walk. So I walk. I'm walking in the offices and the receptionists are there and they're kind of laughing, you know. And then this like security guard kind of sees me. He didn't know who I was. And he starts kind of like pushing me towards the elevator. You're fucking out of here. You're out of here. I spun the motherfucker around. And I said, listen, motherfucker, I'll kick your fucking ass in front of every one of these fucking people here. He, you know, he couldn't move. You know what he said to me? I'll put a bullet in your fucking head. 
<laughs> I said, whoa, 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 whoa. So then I go downstairs and I tell my, my editor, the best editor in the world, I said, hey, Peter, I'm a little late, man. Sorry, but your security kind of tightened up around here because your security guy just threatened to put a bull in my fucking head. Okay. See, we couldn't put that in the book. So you- <laughs> You, are you going to write? You have to write another book. Look, Lenny, what is your Twitter where people can follow you? Obviously, so yeah, much. Lenny likes it. I always bet on you because so many things are going to be coming up for you. You have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It says, I said my dick. See, my dick is it, not. I'm not going to lie. Look, the dick pills, you know. I mean, because I think that it's just, I'm not going to lie. It's a process now. You know, take a dick pill, fucking this, that. You know what I mean? For, for I mean, for what? I mean, you know, you've I mean, kind, you're kind of off women right now. Yeah. Cause it's, it's a whole long process. Yeah. And- I know. I look, look, I could pitch a tenant will always. Okay. You know? But now it's just, you get a little older. I mean, I still can get some fucking, you know, if I take a dick pill, I still fucking, they know they got fucked. Okay. I mean, like, they, like a lot of them say I can't feel my <laughs> sure. toes. You know? Sure. Yeah. It still toes. works when you need it to work. It's just, right. you know, you, you're. I take a dick pill, you know, so um, it's a process, but, but so. Like that's why I'm more into the pleasing, you know. I'm more into like like getting them off. Uh, that gets me off to get them off. Okay? You are a giver, Lenny Dykstra. If we have learned right. anything in this podcast, you are a giver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen. So you're cool. So you're one of the coolest chicks I've ever met. Oh. And like and I don't like girls, okay? Well, Lenny, I'm honored. I you know, I consider you a friend and Yeah, no, if- you're cool. You're cool. And, and tell your husband uh, hi and tell your, your kid hi. I will. You call me on again. Let me know. You know. You'll yeah. be on again. I will let you know. By uh, absolutely. I'm gonna go. I gotta go service someone right now. All right, you go service someone, Lenny Dykstra. Everybody, thank you, Lenny. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.